My friends, Soul Tribe reading time. I'm a little bit emotional today. That's all right. I'm a little bit emotional. My dogs just went. Um, my dogs just went into care, into doggy daycare. Um, and you know, there's something about animals. You can't. You can't tell them what's going on or why you're not coming back. Um, so I was struggling with that a little. Anyway, <laughs> I'm also, you know, feeling emotional that it is, um, that it'll be a few weeks before I see you guys again. So I'm feeling a little sad about that. Um, I even, you know, my nasty ego was like, maybe you shouldn't do a reading today. Um, but I had to do one. I had to do a soul tribe reading. Um, so I want to do a soul tribe reading and I grabbed the law of, the law of positivis positivism, <laughs> positivity, <laughs> um, the one that, this is the deck that had that, you're bloody brilliant, um, anyway, so I wanted to grab it to use for today's reading, I even might get one or two from the grace, grief, and healing one, um, and then we'll read that last chapter we have to read before I go away, um, so I hope you guys are all doing well, I'm sending you lots of love and light. I am not myself today. Um, so let's, <laughs> the bottom one is I bless my body with nourishing food. So we've been talking about that, the things we put into our body. So maybe you are trying to eat healthier. So what do we have coming out? We have when I heal, the world heals. Um, Empress energy 30. So you could be someone who's very focused on your healing journey. Um, and you know, when you heal, the world heals. I love that. Um, I love that. So there's another one there, which we'll talk about in a minute. But we have 30 first. When I heal, the world heals. The emotions, energy, and frequency we project create change. Not only are we affected by those around us, but we also have a collective web of energy binding us together. This way, our own state reflects out into the world. We see this when major world events happen, affecting those we haven't met. When there's fear or anger, we can feel it in our own being. When committing to healing your emotions and doing the work to walk your, to walk your highest potential and path, you are not only serving yourself, but everyone and everything. You directly impact those around you that experience the shifts happening within you and raise your frequency. On top of this, when you are in a healed space within yourself, only then can you support and heal others fully. Have compassion and love for the journey and fully accept yourself and let this frequency overflow to others and the world. Um, so really interesting. It could be that you're someone who... I just, it came out with another card. And so you could be someone who's very much focused on your own healing, your own self-love. And what I was hearing is you may be calling in love here from someone else. Because we have, my heart is open to receiving love. And look at this card. We have two people and we have a cup there. So you could be someone who, you know, you're healing, you're putting all that energy into yourself. And you could be actually calling in someone who's vibrationally aligned with you, um, whether you know them or not, you know. Interesting. My heart is open to receiving love. So let's read this card. My heart is the center of heaven and earth where we are most receptive and giving. The heart helps us communicate with and through our soul. It is the core of life and helps us transcend the body. Awareness of the heart allows us to connect with our emotions and open up to love and healing. Is your heart open or closed? The heart holds the eternal consciousness and is connected to the divine. The heart is a center for healing and divine love, which translates into other forms of love. Love isn't only practiced between you and other people in your life. It is a universal connection and the internal love of the divine. The heart is where healing starts, and when you have gone through pain and trauma, you can lose the heart connection. This can manifest as lacking self-love, feeling disconnected, lacking communion with the divine source, and feeling almost like an empty shell. When you're conscious of your heart and open it up, you invite unconditional love, compassion, healing, and forgiveness. Interesting. Heart healing, eternal love. 
So is your heart open or closed to love? Maybe it's closed. Maybe by working on this healing, when I heal, the world heals, you'll be able to open yourself up to love. I get lots of people commenting like, oh, I don't have any love in my life. (laughs) Just wait until you start healing. (laughs) Um, You're going to start calling in someone who's, you know, a vibrational match for you. And it doesn't just have to be romantic love. Love is everywhere. We've talked about this. Love romantic love gets put on a pedestal what about our friends that we love um our pets like i'm sitting here crying about my pets we'll get one more from this deck i know i don't look the best right now (laughs) hang on all right i just needed a second (laughs) like a like your mind can be agitated and muddy or it can be still and clear take a break Still your body and mind and observe your thoughts. When watching your thoughts, you realize that they are not you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to observe them. Your true essence exists beyond your thoughts, but they help you to understand this current level of reality. The nature of the mind is to constantly be filled up with thoughts, ideas, visions, the past, the future, harmful patterns of doubt, fears, and limitations. Right now, your mind might be cluttered with biz- and busy with things that don't belong in the present moment. This hijacks you of the potential found here in the now. The mind can be stilled by being aware of your thoughts, observing them, and releasing them. Use the mind to master your thoughts so that your thoughts don't become your master. If you see the thoughts as waves, you can imagine those waves calming down and bringing you stillness and peace. Beautiful. So I'm just going to grab that other deck. So let's get a few of these. Um, Let's get a few of these. We'll just get a couple to see what we need to hear. I can't help it. I'm obsessed with this deck. What do we need to hear as a soul tribe? So we have don't explain yourself, embrace yourself, um, which is really interesting. Um, That's really interesting. I have to like be transparent with you guys. Um, Yesterday we were talking about boundaries and last night I tried to set a boundary this morning um, and I was basically told as soon as I set that boundary, the person said, I'm done with you and started telling me. You know, everything they thought that was wrong with everything they thought was wrong with me, even though they haven't spoken to me in a really long time, um, they don't actually know who I am anymore. And to me, it's clear they want to have a fight and I just can't, I can't, I don't have it in me. So it's interesting. This card came out. Don't explain yourself, embrace yourself. And that's kind of where I was. Like, I don't need to explain myself to you. Um, I think you guys remember that I mentioned something happened like that a few months ago. Well, it's just a repetitive cycle, which is happening again. And I don't need to explain myself to this person. Um, I said, you know, I'm only interested in healthy connections where there's healthy, validating communication and sending me things like I'm done and telling me everything that's wrong with me is not healthy. Um, Anyway, projecting all over me, like, and I don't need to explain myself. I don't need to stay there and tell them my worth, Um, you know. Some of the things they said to me, I'm just like, why? Like, why? Why? Anyway. Anyway, like, I'm not worthy of anything. Anyway. I knew, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but we'll continue reading. Um, Like that card we spoke about yesterday with boundaries, the tiger knows not to go where she's, you know, where she, anyway, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Um, But you don't need to explain yourself to anyone. And if you find yourself just trying to justify yourself to someone, it's time to embrace yourself. It's time to stop, you know, like that thing spoke about yesterday, if it wants to be in your life, it's not going to fight with you. It's not going to push you. Um, if it feels like that, it's not aligned in your life. You know, it's just not right now. 
Anyway, let's read this. Take care of yourself and indulge yourself without offering a long explanation or justification. You know, I saw somewhere that if you find yourself writing blocks and blocks of text to someone or writing drafts in your notes app of these long like explanations or begging someone to stay with you or trying to make someone see your worth, stop. Just stop. You don't have to justify your worth to anyone but yourself. Um, interesting. Embrace imperfections and your flossomeness. I love that, your flossomeness, because we all have flaws. I know I have flaws. Or simply being awesome in spite of and sometimes because of your flaws. Practice unconditional self-love, authenticity and in eccentricity. <laughs> eccentric eccentricity anyway are empowering now honor the most honest honest expression of yourself life is too short to pretend to be anybody else know your worth 12 no need to explain the innermost workings of your head and heart especially if there are better uses of your energy and no need to apologize for being yourself your quirks, foibles, and imperfections can be your most lovable characteristics and clues to your most unique attributes. When a small child mis mispronounces a name or makes a, mis makes a mess or inadvertently performs physical comedy, we find it adorable. Practice finding what's lovable about your flaws. Seek out heroes in real life or in the world of fantasy who are celebrated for their imperfect humanity. Surround yourself with people who accept you and love you for the most honest expression of yourself. Permission to do what is comforting, what makes you happy, even if others don't understand, provided you maintain healthy boundaries with yourself. Make room for eccentricity. Is that what it is? E e eccentricity? Anyway. Practice meeting yourself with love, even when you disappoint yourself. Self-love brings out the best in you. Indulge your whims in healthy ways. If wearing many hats, collecting, no, if wearing zany hats, collecting antique teapots, modeling yourself after a fictional character, meditating barefoot in the garden all morning, staying up late working on a creative project, training for a marathon, signing up for a semester abroad, baking all afternoon, visiting every stone circle in Wales, Mastering origami, writing a book, or heading out to hike the Himalayas tickles your fancy. Follow your bliss in a responsible, safe fashion. Ask others to honor your wishes when they can. No need to justify your feelings to anyone, including yourself. Instead of self-improvement, this is the time to focus on self-exploration. Your genius is in the unique details of your life and personality. Let grief reveal your truest longings, delight, and nature. Grief is hard, so be generous with yourself. And we have find something to celebrate, which is 58. Sometimes the most healing selves we can celebrate is ourselves, our resiliency, fortitude, recovery, softness, sensitivity, and kindness. Sometimes it's helping to celebrate something outside of ourselves, like a friend's marriage milestone, or a coworker's big break, or the collective victory of a group of people in a far-off land. Celebrating is a way to shine and feel shiny, and blow away the cobwebs to be more anchored in our present-day reality. Here and now is where the healing happens. Celebrating today what was wonderful about the past honors the past, and also facilitates present-day healing. Is there an accomplishment you feel proud of, like showing up for a loved one or launching a creative project? Celebrate someone you love, whether they are alive or have passed on. Celebrating is good. Celebrating what is good, hopeful, and life-affirming today is part of healing from past trauma. You are worth celebrating, my friend. You are. I celebrate you. Celebrate small wins, even if it seems slightly ridiculous, like scoring a prime parking space, celebrating the fact that you were in touch with your true and own emotional experience, even when it's challenging and painful, can be healing. Make a list of things to celebrate your, about yourself and about your life right now. Is there anything currently in your life that a much younger version 
of yourself would have celebrated wildly through present day you may though present day you may take for granted what can you celebrate that you worked very hard for like a home a relationship a calmer mind a certain level of physical health a softer attitude attitude towards yourself what can you celebrate that came easily and miraculously sometimes what's healing during grief is leaning into the pain of loss Balancing those feelings with the opposite, the sweetness of celebration, can also be healing. Celebrating does not mean does not have to be ostentatious, <laughs> but can look like quiet acknowledgement of contentment and gratitude. Contentment is underrated. Your internal experience is everything, so celebrate authen- authentically. <laughs> celebrate your past as well as what you're working towards in the future beautiful so taking time to celebrate you know small accomplishments celebrate yourself celebrate your progress celebrate someone else you know and let's get one more we have appreciate what remains when something is taken away it can make you appreciate what remains even more mixed with grief you may experience moments of intense gratitude for tiny or huge blessings that are still part of your life Let this be a normal, nurturing part of your healing process. Gratitude can be a cultivated state of mind. So what number are you? 43. Love you. During the initial days and weeks after a loss, there can be a fierce, frantic, and very conscious clinging to the people, places, things, and roles that remain. It may feel like a salvation and a comfort beyond words that not everything was taken. Then as time moves on, the grieving continues, there can be something different. Healing moments when out of nowhere an intense sense of gratitude for the ordinary view from your back porch or the chore of tidying up a room or the routine assignment handed you or the routine assignment handed you at work feels like a healing gift. It's those out-of-the-blue moments of intense gratitude that take you by surprise that this card speaks to. This gratitude for what remains after loss is often experienced during average daily activities, yet it can also be felt over larger concerns, like the home that keeps you snug and safe, or the ability to walk or drive a car, or the privilege to live in a society where you enjoy certain basic freedoms, and creature comforts that others would consider extraordinary blessings. Your system may be craving the healing quality that simple, grounded gratitude offers. Don't feel guilty for feeling grateful. When a moment of organic gratitude rises up from your system, remember that this is a part of your heart, psyche, and soul administering self-healing. You deserve the grace of gratitude, always end of story, no matter what. Part of your self-love practice might be allowing yourself to feel deep gratitude now when it naturally arises. If moments of gratitude are not organically appearing, don't push it. Loss has forced you to deal with and do enough. Instead, play with gratitude as a healing experiment. Think of one thing you are grateful for from your from your day before going to bed. A kind comment from a coworker the grace of a quiet subway car on your commute home, or the meditation practice that soothes soothes you after you walk in the front door. When you wake up, find one thing to be grateful for about your morning routine. Your favorite pick-me-up drink, saying good morning to a favorite pet, (laughs) or picking out a favorite outfit. Being mindfully grateful that you have the courage and strength to go on for yourself and for others might Be a healing moment of focus each day. Beautiful. So let's read our book. Um, I'm probably just going to start a new part of the recording so that it doesn't cut me off because you guys know how that messes me up when we get cut off. This one, you have to practice letting go. So I feel like a teacher that's, you know, it's going to be summer break. (laughs) This is the last one we're reading before I go away. (laughs) Almost every last one of us lives with the assumption that if something is not right for us, it will simply be pulled away in time. 
We linger, we wonder, we grasp onto what's so clearly not a match, and we wait for the universe to do the dirty work and feel devastated once it's done. We think of letting go as a last-ditch effort to our own progress and sanity. We will let go only if we have to, only if we were forced to, only if the world truly proves to us that something is not meant to be. There is an easier way. Letting go is not an event, it's a practice. It is something we learn to do with the small stuff. That's blue moon intuition. They want to win your heart. Affirmation, or not affirmation, a YouTube. I don't even know who that is. Um, they want to win your heart. <laughs> Where was I? Letting go is not an event, it's a practice. It is something we learn to do with the small stuff, so when the big stuff comes around, we know how. We have to learn to let go of thoughts, of moments. We have to learn to let go of acquaintances, care for others' opinions, so many petty arguments and fights we can choose not to pick. We have to learn to let go of the items that serve only as relics of a time that has passed, the clothes that dressed people, the people we no longer are. We have to learn how to let go of the dreams we chose for the people we eventually outgrew. We have to learn to let go of the idea that other people are meant to live up to our expectations of them rather than their own unpredictable truths. We have made the process of letting go seem like this superhuman feat only attainable for the truly enlightened. We find so many ways around it. Revenge bodies, gaining closure, proving them wrong. We find so many ways at once to make it seem as though we have moved on completely and yet remain precisely where we used to be, living through the gaze of what we imagine someone else might see. Letting go is as effortless as an exhale. You do it all the time. There are so many thousands of things you have released, and only a few that you're still clinging to. Sometimes letting go is an action, sometimes it's a decision, and very often it's a matter of distraction. We let go, not when we think we were supposed to, but when our minds move into reciting different stories, building new realities. We move on, not when we have adequately picked apart the pieces of what used to be, but when we begin to think more about what we'd like to build in its place. We aren't really letting go, we are just accepting what's already gone. What we are actually releasing is just an idea. An idea we had about who we were or who someone else could be. An idea we had about how the future would unfold and how we would arrive into it. An idea we had about the world and how it works and whether or not we are safe. You see, letting go is not a process of simply releasing into nothingness. It's a process of profound growth in place of what no longer serves. We are forced to reach for what will finally heal. Beautiful. Um... Oh, of course, the next the next one is a big one. I was like, maybe we can read one more. But the next um, the next one is quite long. But you know what? No, I'm not going to skip ahead. I feel like we need to read it in order. I want to read it in order. So the one that we're going to start with when I get back is this is how you find the confidence to pursue what you really love. And the reason I don't want to skip ahead is because the next one... This one's about pursuing what you love. And then the next one, it's a big one. It's a long one. Read this if you're on the brink of a breakthrough but are afraid to take the leap. So I feel like those two have to do with each other. I mean, taking a leap of faith towards what you pursuing what you truly love. I just had to wipe my nose. <laughs> so yes, for that reason, I'm going to wait. Oh no, I lost our page. Hang on. For that reason, um, I'm going to wait so that we can read them, read them in order. Yes. Um, I'm not going to take this book with me when I travel, but I may take another one um, just so that I can, I don't know, maybe one of the other ones that I'll read, I'll realize is a good one for us as a soul tribe as well. So Yes, maybe it'll help me maybe it'll help me feel more connected to you guys while I'm away. <laughs> so let's get you some affirmations. My inner world is peaceful. It is safe for me to look within. Each time I look deeper into myself, I will find incredibly beautiful treasures. Remember that Jaguar card about 
facing your shadows and finding the diamond that lives within. I am in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Believe. I see myself healthy, whole, and living in a society where it is safe for me to be who I am and to love others. My day begins and ends with self-love and appreciation. I wake up in the morning loving myself, praising myself, and telling myself I love being me. I no longer judge or criticize myself. I am free to love who I am. I forgive myself for any wrongdoings. And we'll just get a couple more. I am grateful for all the wonderful things in my world. I express gratitude to the universe often, knowing that my thoughts are heard and appreciated. I have abundance in all areas of my life. I claim abundance for myself right here and right now. I deserve to be prosperous. I deserve my good. So my friends, I'm going to leave it there. I know it was a little bit, um, it wasn't a regular Soul Tribe reading because clearly I'm not feeling the best today, but... I did want to come on and do one last Soul Tribe reading with you. Um, I will be back at the end of September. So in the meantime, I have tarot readings that I will be posting, but um, I won't be here for these ones. So I will miss you guys. Look at me. I'm falling apart. <laughs> um, hang on. So remember that I love you and that your presence matters to me and that I will miss you greatly while I'm away and that I will see all of you when I get back. And you guys know I'm emotional, so you know this was coming. <laughs> I'm just a sensitive soul. You guys know this about me and you accept me anyway, so I love you guys. Um, but yes, I'm crying all over myself, so I will talk to you guys soon. I'll see you in two weeks. Take care of yourselves. Remember your affirmations. Don't lose hope. Don't forget about the soul tribe and I will see you when I get back. Take care of yourselves. Bye.